right, gather up where you can see this painting. I'm covering up the label on purpose. I want you to look before we get any sort of background information. What's the whole picture about? In the looking for what's underneath the rainbow. Okay, what is underneath the rainbow? There's like a home. Home. Okay, so you notice this tiny little house. Sometimes that takes a while to see. And that's at the foot of the rainbow. So what's that about? Why did the artist do that? Well, homestead. Homestead. Like, homestead. Out west, that was the big American for the dream. West. Have your own yeah. land, yep. have your own house, and not be subject to anybody's yeah. control. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. So that's the American dream. Have your own spot, surrounded by land. OK. What else do you notice? Um, we've used the words sort of beauty, paradise. How else would you describe this particular landscape? Vast. 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 Great one. Open. Right, you're not totally alone, but you don't have right next door neighbors to deal with. Okay. The house is really small. It is really hard to see. What does the artist do to make sure your eye goes there eventually? How does he point it out? Right, it's right at the end of the rainbow. But that really wasn't enough for him. How else does your eye go there? You got this lot coming from here too. That angles out. I have. You have what coming up? This lot. Absolutely. You also go to yeah, they point in that direction also. Along the riverbank here. Fantastic. So there are all these lines, this little sort of drop of light leading up here, the water, the path, the pointing. So right. So that really lets you know this is kind of the main subject of the story. It's kind of American dream. The title is Landscape with Rainbow. It was painted in 1859. Um, and the, the artist is Robert Duncanson, Robert Scott Duncanson. So if this is painted in 1859, why would you choose this subject of, in about that time in American history? Let's consider, first of all, what's going on in the country? country. People are beginning to go west also, you know? Okay. And the country is the American dream with all the politics going on is some ways disappearing. Okay, so the, we, the American dream, this idea has come up several times, so that's really maybe being challenged, is that what you're saying? No, I'm or? saying with the conflict, the regional conflict, some of the ideals of America are in question. Okay. The other thing to add that isn't on this label, but it is available on our website in the biography of the artist, is that this artist is African American. Does that change oh. the painting for you at all? Wow. Okay, I'm hearing, oh, oh, interesting. <laughs> Going north of the promised land. So if just, it's not just American Dream, it's kind of promised land. Yeah, but okay. then why will you point to white people then? Ah, because his work, Dominant culture. he's hiding behind his work, his work's not going to be respected. He's, a, he's an African American. So he paints white people on it because that's a white man's going to look at a painting with white people in it. He's not going to look at a painting if there's a black man. It's going to change the meaning. If you're thinking of contemporary viewers, you're right, it's right. going to change the meaning. Um, Duncanson was funded by abolitionists. Um, and their goal was to show how ridiculous this idea that a race was lesser by showing how skilled an African American artist could be. So he's showing off technical skill um, as well as maybe this dream, this kind of American dream on the eve of the Civil War. Um, there are kind of three eras of African American art. Everything before the Harlem Renaissance in the 1920s is kind of what you see here of trying to say, we're just as good. This is, you know, this is ridiculous. We can do everything that you can do. Um, it's not until the Harlem Renaissance that it's saying, we don't have to show your world, we can show our own.